Now, we're in a series on the names of God, and, and today we're going to talk about Jehovah Jireh. Uh, and as I said last week, there's going to be some very enlightening things that we're going to find out about this name. Now, 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 okay, let me just jump into my notes because I'm ready to get ahead of myself. All right, so the first name of God uh, was Elohim. And Elohim is the universal creator. That's, that's that name of God. And Elohim was found in Genesis 1. And that was introduced. That's the God of all, in all, and a part of all. In Genesis 2, however, we're introduced to Yahweh. Now, it's very inter interesting that that name Yahweh was introduced uh, first in Genesis 2, and it was right before God created man. And, and in Genesis 2, it, it switches the name of God from being this universal God of the sky, God of the stars, God of the moon, God of the earth, God of the plants, God of everything to Yahweh because God of the universe became, and this is a powerful word that we see, he became personal. See, he, he, he went from just being the universal God that created the animals, that created the, you know, created the plants, created the birds, you know, separated the waters, uh, created the light, created the sun, set time in place. He went from that place to being a God that breathed life into man. Yahweh showed up. Now, Moses, who wrote the first five books, was introduced to this person of God in Exodus 3. And from his revelation that this God, whom he knew as El or Elohim, has just introduced himself to me as Yahweh, not just God, but Yahweh means Lord. See, there's, there's one thing to, to comprehend God. It's another thing to comprehend him as my Lord. And see, and many people comprehend Elohim. You know, I talked about statistics. Many people believe there's a God. They believe there's a higher intelligence. They believe in the man upstairs. Okay, so, so they believe in Elohim. However, when you get into Yahweh, it changes. Elohim, uh, everybody comprehends Elohim, but once you start to know him, not as just God, but the Lord God, he becomes interactive in your life and a personal relationship develops where well, you can recognize him as El Roja. We talked about El Roja last week, right? Well, El Roja meant I now see the Lord who sees me. I now see the Lord God who sees me, personal. See, and, and in that it would say Yahweh the Lord, Yahweh God, Yahweh El Roja, the Lord, the God who sees me. See, it, it changes. It's not just the God who sees me, but it's the Lord God who sees me. Interactive. He becomes interactive. We talked about El Doat, the Lord who is omniscient, the Lord of all knowledge. It's the Lord God, Yahweh God, who is, who, who, who is all knowledge. He goes from, see, we, we have a mind, spirit, and the soul. Now, you know, when God created the animals, animals have a mind and a soul, but they don't have a spirit. That, that's the difference between man and all the other animals. You know, and so, so when, when man dies, their spirit goes to heaven. Now, you know, I know the movie All Dogs Go to Heaven, y'all believed, right? And, and I know and, and all dog lovers right now looking at me like, don't you say it. And listen. I'm not saying you won't see, you know, the, the, the puppy in heaven. I'm not saying you're not going to not going to experience him again. OK, I'm not saying that. All right. So so don't don't start. Don't turn me off. Don't shut me down. I'm just saying. OK, but they don't have a spirit that speaks to the spirit of God the same way. They have a soul and they have a mind and they're cute and cuddly and all that other stuff. OK, but there's a difference between an animal and man. See, and we interact with God different. Everything else on earth interacts with Elohim. Man interacts, once you're a believer, interacts with Yahweh, the God who is and will be and is becoming. All right, let's keep going. So when does the name Jehovah come into play? 
Now, Jehovah is a Latinization of the Hebrew and one vocalization of a tetragram, Y-H-W-H, or actually the spell was Y-H-V-H, yad Vey. Uh, excuse me, yad He vad He. And so those are the actual Hebrew letters. When you say them, yad Vey had Vey. That's, that's Yahweh. Now, a, tet- a tetragrammation is taking a, a word in another language and trying to not translate the word. Because if you, if you translate a word, you know, you say, okay, well, in, in English, you say bathroom, and in Spanish, it's baño, right? And in English, you say good, and in Spanish, it's bueno. You know, and in English, you say guitar, and in Spanish, it's la guitarra, all right? Now, I don't know Spanish. I just know enough to say those words, okay? So don't, don't get it twisted. Pastor Tommy does not know how to speak fluent Spanish. He knows how to fake it really, really good. And so, but that's a translation. This is the word in this. This is the word in English. However, yad, he, vad, he are the, are the letters pronounced, so they had to figure out a, a tetragrammation is how do we take these letters and how do we convert them into words of understanding, you know, to, so that we can comprehend what they're trying to say. All right. And here's a good example between uh, how we do it with God. Okay. Now, Super Dude calls me Superman. That's my name, Superman. Well, Juice Man, uh, Julian, but we call him Juice Man, he, he can't say Superman yet. So he calls me man, man. He says, man, man. Yes, he was over at the house for Thanksgiving. Man, man, blaze, because he likes blaze. Man, man, blaze. Bye, man, man. He calls, he calls me man, man. Now, I don't care. I love it. Call, you call me man, man. I respond to him as man, man, right? But he calls me man, man. So he took Superman. And he, I can't say Superman. So how can I say something that means the same thing as Superman? Because all I'm trying to do is get this man to respond to me when I call him. All I'm trying to do is figure out how can I say the same thing that my brother is saying, that my mom said that this is this man's name and get this man's attention. So I, I'm a call, I, 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 can only, I can only figure out man, man. I can only figure out man, man. And, get, and guess what? Just because he calls me man, man, does not mean I, I don't respond. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I love that he calls me man, man. He may never call me Superman. He may grow up saying, that's man, man. He could be 15 years old, walk in the house, man, man. I'll still respond the same way. It won't matter. You know, his brother could go, that's Superman. And he'll go, man, man. So, so. Tetragrammation takes words and tries to convert them in how we can say them. And so that's how we did with Yahweh, the proper name of God in the Hebrew Bible. The consensus among scholars is that the historical vocalization of the tetragrammation at the time of the eradication that all just flowed together of the Torah, which was in 6th century AD, is most likely Yahweh. Now, they added the vowels in order to be able to say the words is what they did. So they they had to stick the vowels in. And and these vowels helped me to be able to say the words. The historical vocalization was lost because in the Second Temple Judaism, during the third and second centuries AD, the pronunciation of the tetragrammation came to be avoided. They felt that Yahweh, Yahweh, was such a divine name of God, it should never be pronounced. You know, laying in this bed, laying in the bed this morning, going through this sermon, and I wrestled with, okay, Lord, they reverence this name so much that they would never speak the name. You know, and we just say names. We, ju- we just say names. But do we really know the power behind the name? Could, could we, once we know the power behind the name, reverence it? Just reverence that name a little better? Reverence it a little more? And so they substituted the word Adonai instead of saying Yahweh. Now, Adonai was first used in Genesis 15 too. And it was used by Abram. And it says, and Abram said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward in my house 
is this Eliezer of Damascus. This is when he was talking about having, uh, he doesn't have a son. But, but he referred to the Lord God as Adonai. Now, Adonai means master. So it goes from you are God, you are the Lord God, to you are my master. I'm submitting, I'm submitting to you. And so they begin to replace Yahweh with saying Adonai. Now, it didn't change the way it was written. They just would never say the name. They're only stuck with Adonai. Now, the Hebrew vowels of Adonai were added to the Tetragrammation by the, this group called the Masoretes. Now, the Masoretes were a group of Jewish scholars, and their job was to try to figure out how to take this Hebrew Bible. Come on, y'all are doing good sticking with me. How to take this Hebrew Bible, take these words, and make them more pronounceable so that the gospel could be spread. That's what their job. And so they took Adonai, the vowels from Adonai, and they took Yad He Vad He and put them together. And once they put those words together, that was the first time they came up translated around 12th century as Yehovah. Now just think about that. Just the way I said it, Yehovah. That was the, that was the first articulate name that they came up with, we can't say Yahweh. That's, that's too personal of God. And we have Adonai. But what name could we give him that'll symbolize both of these together? Yahweh. Yehovah. 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 Just feel that. Yehovah. Now, later, the, the Y in Jehovah was changed to a J. That was one of the last letters that came to the alphabet was the J. It's the same thing with Jesus. Jesus' name actually is Yeshua. But Yeshua is actually, when you translate that Hebrew, it's the same name as Joshua, which is pretty powerful because if you study Joshua, there's a lot of similarities between Joshua and Joshua. In, in, in Yeshua, but because they wanted to distinguish, okay, Yeshua, so the S-H in many languages was hard to pronounce, so they collapsed it to the S, so then it was Yeshua, and then once they began to, to say Yeshua, then they added the other S and the J, and he became Jesus, and, and that's important for you to know because there's people out there that's going to say, well, you know what? Jesus ain't even his real name. His name was Yeshua. So in the J, they didn't even come later. The Bible is all wrong. You say, no, it's not all wrong. I can explain to you why we did that so it could be more pronounceable. But guess what? Demons still bow at the name of Jesus. You know, so it doesn't matter because, because you say it and he understands what you're trying to say and will respond just like when I hear man, man, I look up and I'm going, yes, what you need. Just like when I hear man, man, now man, man may not be my, y'all may not call me man, man. I'm not Pastor man, man. I'm Pastor Tommy to y'all and I'm Tommy and I, and I, you know, and, and all of those other names. But when he walks in the room. And says, man, man, I stop what I'm doing. He'll walk over to me, man, man, and throw his hands up. I will pick him up and walk around doing whatever I'm doing. Because I'm going to respond to the name that he gave me. Come on, man. So, so, so don't get caught up in the, what, what, what about this? Just know there's power in the name. Just know there's power in the name. So the actual, so if you look at the word, you know, Jehovah, you got to understand that Jehovah means Yehovah. Yehovah is a combination of Adonai and Yahweh. And it all goes back to the divine name of God, the personal name of God. Now, why is this extremely important for us to know? Yahweh is the interactive God being who we need him to be. He's not just the existing God, but he is the God that will become who you need him to be, or create the experience 
that you need for deliverance. I love to say it that way. He'll create the experience that you need for deliverance. And I'm not just talking about, you know, deliverance from demons getting cast out and stuff like that. But, but you may need deliverance from lack. You may, need, you may need wisdom, which is deliverance from ignorance. You may need peace, which is deliverance from frustration. You may need joy, which is deliverance from depression. Come on, man. See, so, so and, and Yahweh is the God that we pray to. Yehovah is the God that, that will create that experience to deliver you. Whoo, I'm on fire right now. All right. Now, this fits with where we're going as we define Yahweh God as I am becoming that which I'm becoming. Yehovah is becoming that which I'm becoming. And so now we understand Yehovah Jireh. Now we can understand, or actually the way it was originally spelled was Yehovah Jireh. You can even take Yehovah and go all the way back and go Yahweh Jireh. It's who that is. Jehovah Jireh. It's powerful. Which is the best way to say it. The Lord who became my provision. Now, when you put it together, he's the Lord who became my provision my provision. Not just the Lord provides. Jehovah became my provision. He he just didn't provide the provision. He became provision for me. He, 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 he did, he, I called out to him and he became that provision. He just didn't provide it, but he was provision. Now, we're, now, now we have a better understanding when this word was first used with Abram, Abraham and Isaac. In Genesis 22, starting in verse 1, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abram, pray Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom I love, whom you love, I'm sorry, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain. I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship. And then we, he believed, we, both me and the boy, will come back to you. Abraham took the wood from the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two went up together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Father, yes, son, Abraham replied, the fire and the wood are here, Isaac. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now, he already put two to two together. Where's the lamb? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Hold up. God himself will provide. Now, now he didn't use Jehovah Jireh yet. He was in faith. God himself, he's going to provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. He's going to provide the lamb. Now, Abraham, I had already figured, Isaac is the lamb. <laughs> but I'm going to, uh, somewhere in here, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this sacrifice, but this is my, th- this is my promise. So I'm going to sacrifice my promise, trusting that God is going to give me my promise back. Yeah, yeah. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told them about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son, which is what what gave the approval for God to send his son, his only son. But let's keep going. Abraham looked up and there was, a, there was in a thicket and he saw a ram caught by his horns. Now, many people believe 
that they walked right past that ram when they were coming up. They walked past it. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. <clears throat> so Abraham called that place Yehovah Yireh. The Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. So what did Yehovah Yireh or Jehovah Jireh provide? Or rather, what experience did he create for Abraham? He provided the sacrifice. He, he, he provided, he provided the sacrifice. Now that sacrifice goes on to foretell of Jesus because it says on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. But looking forward, he, Jehovah, became the sacrifice in Christ. And, and, and he, he himself, he sent his son, his only son, who is of him. And he became the sacrifice. That, that, Je Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, God will provide the sacrifice. The sacrifice opens the door for, best way, for all the benefits and provisions of the relationship. The, see, Abraham had to, sac had to go along with sacrifice and Isaac. He had to take him up there. He, he was about to kill him. Now, I know on the TV they talk about he, was doing, he wasn't doing that because the way the priest would sacrifice the lamb or, or the calf, they would put the knife to their neck and they would cut the neck. So he had the knife there to, to follow. Through. He had to go all the way before God knew, okay, he's going to do it. I, I, I can trust him to do it. So now that I can trust him to do it, everything that he wants and needs and desires is now available for me because he was willing to go through with the sacrifice. I'm going to give him the benefit of actually doing the sacrifice. And so, so now when you fast forward in Christ, who was the last sacrifice, all the benefits that we needed in that relationship with God was released through that sacrificial experience. Jehovah Jireh, I will provide. Now, this name, Yehovah, Yahweh, is so powerful. And I, I, wonder, I meant to bring this up the last time I was teaching on Yahweh, and, and Corinne brought it up this past week, and I said, okay, perfect, because this is the perfect ending to this sermon. Because later, Jesus invoked the name when he was in the garden. In John 18, starting in verse 1, this is when Jesus was arrested. It says, when he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. Oh, they got it up on the screen. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Verse 2. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guided, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. So they came equipped. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, I am he. When, when, that I am. Watch, we're going to take it apart. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. Verse 6. We got verse 6? No. Oh, yeah, we're standing there with them. All right, we stop right there. Oh, no, 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 no. We're standing there with them. When Jesus, verse 6, I do have it. And when Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. The minute he said it, they dropped to the ground. Dropped to the ground. Now, that word, I am he, is a Greek word, ami. It's the Greek word, ami, and it means I exist or I am. Now, the brace, basic Greek verb expresses being or means to be. 
and its counterparts properly convey straightforward being existence without explicit limits. In the present tense indicative mood, it can be time inclusive, meaning om omnitemporal, like the Hebrew imperfect tense. Only the context indicates whether the present tense also is timeless. For example, he may, you know, when Jesus said, I am the life, I am the way, I am the bread, I am the light. That, that's, he's saying it right now, but it means forever. So it's, it's not just a temporal space, but it's all inclusive. Now, in John 14, 6, an example, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's on me, okay? Now, the I am formula, the Greek formula for, for I me, the I am. See, when, when, they, when they were taking words that were Hebrew and Aramaic, because Jesus spoke Hebrew and, and Aramaic, when they, when they took those words, they had to go, okay, what word did he say that matches in the Hebrew? And Ami, the only word Ami matched with in the Hebrew was Yahweh. That was the only word. So when they came and they said, you know, uh, he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, Yehovah. He said the name of God. I am here. I'm here. Yehovah. And they fell to the ground. The power of God was so powerful because they weren't supposed to say the name. But when he said the name, he said, I am he. He spoke his name. He spoke, this is who I am. And what did he do? He submitted to them, went to them, submitted to the cross. He became the sacrifice. Yehovah became the sacrifice so that we can have relationship with God once and forever. Man, man, man. He became the provision. When, when, when I got to this conclusion, I was driving this morning and I started to tear up some. And it's because I said, Lord, I, are we aware? Are we, are we even aware in the hustle of our day and our life? And we just throw up prayers in hopes that you're hearing, not realizing the power of Jehovah, not realizing the power of the name, not realizing Jehovah Jireh. Not, not, not understanding that you became the sacrifice so that we have access to all the benefits of the relationship. Yeah. So we have infinite deliverance. Do we know the power that's behind that name? Or do we get caught up in the antics of things? I know there's many times I do. And I have to still myself and go, Tommy, he is Jehovah. He is Jehovah. Seek him as that. Seek him as, your, as the one who has provided the sacrificial experience so that all you need in life has been made available to you. Don't act. I'm talking to myself. Don't act as if you are being, if things are being withheld from you. Yeah. Don't construct your day to day as if, as if Jehovah has not provided. Don't construct your, your conversation or the words out of your mouth as if you have no control because you are in relationship with Jehovah. Yahweh, Adonai, your Lord, your master, your God. That's who you're in relationship with. Wow. That name makes me just be still. It really does. So as you're going through your week, cry, all right, no, because I'm ready to close on the Holy Spirit and saying no. There are some of us who are watching, some of you that are watching, 
that have done exactly that. You have treated the Lord as if his arm was too short to reach. As if he has selected those to bless and you're not one of them. Uh, you have, there are some who are watching who, who do not, who have not accepted Jehovah. You just haven't accepted him as he will become the deliverance I need. We, you've allowed the influence of outsiders to taint your perspective of Jehovah. And, and believe him just, I don't want to say merely, but that's what the Holy Spirit is saying, merely as a God. That's what, he, as a God. And not the Lord and the master of your life. He's, he, he has become a God. And the Lord is saying, reset your spirit today. Reset your mind today. Last week I said, others around you may not know the God you know. They may not know Jehovah. So you can't, they, they may only know Elohim, the God of the universe. And you know the interactive relational God that you go walk in and speak to and know he hears and responds to you. Nurture that. And, and reset yourself. Reset yourself. Reset yourself. Reset yourself. Reset yourself. Reset yourself. Father, we hit the reset button as we're closing in on the end of this year. And we come back to you, the Lord, who provides the sacrifice, who becomes the sacrifice for us. Father God, we thank you that you have purposed who you are in our life. Father, we thank you that e even now I feel the heavenly host at alert and attention because of the name I'm speaking. I feel the angels. and I, if, you, if you never understand angels, they're just heavenly beings. I feel them, and the scripture talks about that, that they, that they respond to the name. They respond to the name. Father, let us get our act together. Be the representation of your body on this earth. To walk in a heavenly place with you as spiritual beings and spiritual ambassadors on this earth. Truly representing who you are, your heart, and most of all, Lord, your love and compassion for those who don't know you. The only thing that separates us is your love. The only thing that people will know us by is your love. The only thing that will change hearts, Lord, is your love. The only thing that will turn people around is your love, Lord. The power that you have in us only comes from, your, from, from having compassion, Lord. It only comes from love. It doesn't come from words. It comes from expressing your love, Lord. So let us, let us get back and get ourselves together. Start loving people. Start looking at them with your eyes. Start believing that you can change their heart. Jehovah, we are so honored to be called your children, and we thank you. There may be some who are watching who don't know Yeshua, Jehovah. They may not understand Jesus. 
They may not have a relationship with God, but they're at a place now where they want to know more. Father, we celebrate them right now in Jesus' name. Father, we rejoice in their decision to pursue you. And Father, we just pray that and ask that they reach out to us at deepwaters.cc forward slash prayer. We love praying for people and we love praise reports, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, our Lord. Our Lord, 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 God, the Most High God, our Lord. It is, man, I pray you feel what I feel. I pray you feel what I feel here in this place. God is so good. I'm going to pray for the giving, but I want to say one last thing before I do. It's the love of God that compels people to change. Paul said, I didn't come with eloquent speech, but I came with power. The power comes from love. It doesn't come from eloquent speech. It doesn't come from speaking. It doesn't come from shouting. It doesn't come that way. It comes from compassion and love. I know that's not exciting. It's the hard way. It's the hard way of change. To love somebody to change is difficult. It doesn't happen fast. It takes time. It takes patience. It takes endurance. But that's the God way. And let God change them, whoever they may be. Amen. Amen. All right. And now I'm going to pray for our giving, but I'm going to change what I call you, because I, I, uh, I call you members, and I thank you for being a member of Deep Waters Community Church. But those who give to Deep Waters, I want to call partners. There may be people who are members who give, and then there may be people who have not finished membership that just may be watching, and they want to partner with what we're doing here at Deep Waters Community Church. And so I just want to pray for those who would love to partner with us and what we're doing in the ministry that we're building here, along with the nonprofit organization and the corporation and, and really what we're beginning to expand. Okay, and so, so let, let, let me just pray for you. Father, I thank you for those who are partnering with us. I thank you those who are giving their gifts, Lord, in honor of you and in trust and belief in the vision of Deep Waters Community Church to be a multicultural church that embraces and supports the community we're in. And Father, and that seeks to provide a, a change mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially in that community. And Father, so we, we thank you for those who are partnering with us. Father, that we together are building something absolutely amazing, Lord. And I thank you for their gifts, we ask that you continue to prosper them, increase them, and replenish their giving. Prosper them, increase them, and replenish their giving, Lord. Those are all three things that you promised in your word. Father, that they are blessed to be a blessing. You have blessed them, and out of who they are, they are a blessing. And you promise to refill their homes. Increase Increase, increase, Lord. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen.